today we are going to do PAG 5.2. We have an unknown uh, concentration of a glucose solution in here and the goal of this practical is to figure out what the concentration of that glucose solution is. Um, so we will make, um, by doing a serial dilution, uh, multiple known glucose solutions, so known concentrations of glucose in these solutions. Um, and then we will test the presence of glucose using the Benedict's test for reducing sugars, uh, which starts off nice and blue like this, and then it goes through um, a colour change depending on how much glucose is present. Um, so blue all the way, like reverse rainbow through to brick red, if there's lots of glucose present. Um, and then once we've done that, we'll make the test quantitative rather than just qualitative um, by popping our samples into a colorimeter. Um, and that will give us some like actual number data. And then we will plot our concentration data against our colorimeter data to give us a nice graph. Um, and we will also have been doing the Benedict's test and the colorimeter readings for our unknown glucose concentration. And we'll be able to use our graph to read off um, the glucose concentration for our unknown. Just before we start, I'm gonna pop on my safety goggles. My hair's already up. And then we'll be using a water bath, which is set to um, 90 to 100 degrees. So that's really hot. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do then is to collect 10 centimeters cubed of 1% glucose solution. Um, so I've been given some 1% glucose solution in here. And I will use this to make a serial dilution and we need 1%, 0.5%, 0.25, 0 0.13, 0 0.06. Um, and then also we will have 0% glucose, which will just be some distilled water. Um, and I'm just going to label up my beakers first of all, so that I know what is going where. You'll also notice while I've just done that, that I've got um, a different syringe in each one. Um, and it's just so that I can be sure I'm not transferring one glucose concentration from one beaker into another. So I've got my 10 centimetres cubed of 1% glucose in here. And then it just says to make a dilution series of glucose in distilled water to give the following concentrations. So I'm gonna do that by taking um, five millilitres of the 1% glucose solution from this beaker and pop it into my next one and then do five centimetres cubed of water. So I'm taking half of this and then it will be half water and I'll do the same again, same again, same again, same again. Next, I have to label um, my test tubes. It says boiling tubes in the instructions, but we have some test tubes. Um, and I need to label them with each of the concentrations that we've just made, and then one of them needs to be labelled with unknown. So I next need to take one centimetre cubed of each of my glucose concentrations and pop them into the corresponding tube. Next we're adding five centimetres cubed of quantitative Benedict solution um, to each of our test tubes. So Benedict solution in, we need to pop it into our water bath for 15 minutes. Okay, our water bath is up to 91 degrees now. It is very hot. Um, I'm just gonna pop these straight in. Okay and starting the timer for 15 minutes. While I'm waiting those 15 minutes for my test tubes in the water bath, I've just started to draw my calibration curve. Um, so our independent variable, the thing that we've changed, is glucose concentration. So I've got that on the x-axis. Um, and you must make sure that you have a linear scale. Um, because this is continuous data, we could have chose any values for glucose concentration um, between 0 and 1 here. Um, and so we will be plotting like our lower points quite closely together. Um, but then we'll have a difference of 0 0.25 to 0 0.5, then 0 0.5 
to one, which is a bigger jump. You don't want those to be kind of evenly spaced. 15 minutes has passed. Um, so again, we're gonna take out the test tubes from the water bath, just be careful because it's really hot. You can see we've got a nice color change. This is no longer blue. Our instructions now say to stand these in a rack to cool a little bit. Um, so while that's happening, I'm just gonna try and explain a little bit about what's gone on here. Um, so our Benedict solution started off this nice blue colour and the reason for that is that it's got uh, copper Cu2 plus ions in it um, and they are blue and what happens is when there's glucose present in your sample um, those Cu2 plus ions are reduced to Cu plus ions and those like form a solid precipitate. Um, so the more glucose is present, the more precipitate will be formed and the less blue your solution will be as a result because those blue Cu2 plus ions have been kind of removed, they've been reduced to Cu plus. So where we have got no glucose, we have still got blue Benedict solution. None of those Cu2 plus ions have been reduced to Cu plus ions. We have kind of no solid precipitate in there forming. But what starts to happen as you go up in glucose concentration is that one slightly less blue all the way up to our 1% glucose, which is not blue at all anymore. Um, the reason this hasn't gone um, brick red is just that the quantitative Benedict solution that we use is slightly different to the qualitative Benedict solution that we used, but the same like principle, the same process is happening. So now that these are cooled, the next instruction is to pop two centimetres cubed of each solution into some centrifuge tubes. So I'm going to label my centrifuge tubes up to make sure I don't get confused. If you're doing this in a class as well, I would suggest putting your initials on the centrifuge tube so nobody gets confused. Just to show you, um, I've got a test tube here and then my centrifuge tubes are just actually like shorter versions of the test tubes. Um, often you'll see um, smaller centrifuge tubes and they've got like little lids on. So the reason that we're using a centrifuge is because those Cu plus ions, those ones that like create a precipitate, they will be sort of floating around in our solution at the moment. And we want to centrifuge them, kind of force those solid copper ions to the bottom of the centrifuge tubes, uh, because if they're moving around in our solution, it will affect how the light is absorbed or transmitted to our sample when we come to use the colorimeter in the next step. So two centimeters cube of each of these concentrations transferred into the centrifuge tubes. So I'm gonna pop them into the centrifuge. You twist here to open. It makes a nice noise and then you can unlock it. I'll show you inside. Here are where you put the tubes. Um, you have to be very careful that you balance the centrifuge. So either you have all four tubes in and they all have the same volume of solution in them, or you can have two in, they must be on opposite sides. They must have the same volume of solution in them. And then just the controls. When I shut this, it will just show me that it's locked by popping up a little light against this lock. Um, the timer is set to two minutes and if I press this button, it will start. So I need to put my samples in. Locked, timer set and start. So I have my centrifuged tubes and next we're going to use um, a colorimeter. I'll just show you what it looks like. So this is where we're going to pop our sample in um, and then our controls at the bottom we've got on. Um, when we pop a sample in and we need to calibrate, we'll press calibrate. We need our light colour to be set to red, which it is, and then we want transmission rather than absorbance, which it is. Um, so the reason that we're using uh, red light this time is because our samples um, which have a lot of blue in them due to those Cu2 plus ions, um, that red light will be absorbed by those Cu2 plus ions. So this is a way to find out basically the concentration of Cu2 plus ions that are left. The more Cu2 plus ions, the more red light will be absorbed and the less red light will be transmitted. I've got some cuvettes here um, in a little stand 
Um, I'm going to label the cuvette stand but not the cuvettes um, because otherwise the light will be kind of blocked from shining through by the pen that I used. I need to protect the supernatant from my centrifuge tube into its cuvette and I'll just show you this close up. Um, so the supernatant is this liquid part and then we'd call this the pellet um, made of the precipitate at the bottom. And this is just distilled water, so I need to use this one first to calibrate my colorimeter. Um, if you have a little look at the cuvettes as well, you can see that they've got like a slightly frosted side and then a clear side. And if you have a look at your colorimeter, you'll be able to see it tells you which way the light path goes. So I must make sure that I put in my cuvette so that the clearer sides align with where the light's going to pass through it. Um, the other thing to watch is that if you have a little bubble like this, it's possible that that will affect um, the light passing through it. So just give it a gentle tap on the bench and that should get rid of it. Um, you also don't want to get your cuvette scratched or wet on the outside because that will also affect um, how the light is able to pass through. So I've just put in my distilled water and pop in the cap on the top and then I have to press calibrate and when I do so because we're reading transmission the value that we should get will be um, 100 because 100% 100 almost of the light the red light will pass through distilled water but as you start to have um, increasing kind of blue solutions less and less light will be transmitted I'm just writing down my um, transmission values in a quick raw data table. Now I have my uh, transmission values recorded, I can now plot um, my calibration curve. We have glucose concentration along the bottom, we have transmission up the side which is just in arbitrary units or you could use percentage. Um, I've remembered a title at the top of my graph and then I've plotted my points and drawn a line through them. So the last thing to do is have a look where my unknown glucose concentration transmission value sits, which is 97.7, which will be up here. So I just have to read along and then read down and that will tell me my final glucose concentration. The only thing left to do now is to tidy away the practical equipment and then at the end of the instruction sheet there are three extension questions to answer which makes you think about what we've done and why which will help you in your written exam. Bye!